The most basic type of promoter you can have in a prokaryote are constitutive promoters. These promoters initiate mRNA synthesis independent of the influence of regulation. The term constitutive expression is more commonly defined as expression of a gene that is transcribed at a constant level. This idea of constant expression turns out to be a very fuzzy concept that our field still grapples with. In practice, transcription rates depend highly on the physiology of the cell, and thus in practice one never observes true constant or even consistent expression. Thus, I'll give it a more concrete but specific biochemistry-based definition. A constitutive promoter is one whose observed states only include free and sigma factor bound species. In E. coli, the DNA encoding a constitutive promoter is a pattern composed of two patches of sequences called the minus 10 box and the minus 35 box. The numbers minus 10 and minus 35 are positions of the centers of the two boxes relative to the transcriptional start sites and units of base pairs. The RNA polymerase recognizes these patches and initiates a new mRNA molecule beginning at the transcriptional start site. The E. coli core RNA polymerase is an enzyme composed of five polypeptide subunits forming a stable complex. Additional proteins, called sigma factors, are the adapters that match up the polymerase with its promoters. A sigma factor is shown in teal in this figure. The most common sigma factor in E. coli is sigma 70, and this pattern of minus 10 and minus 35 boxes is specific to this sigma factor. Different sigma factors have different sequence specificities. Some processes in the cell, like central metabolism and the mechanisms for synthesis of proteins and mRNAs, are universally conserved amongst prokaryotes. However, the mechanisms of transcriptional in initiation are highly variant. Different organisms use different sequences to initiate transcription. Though there is only one core RNA polymerase species in E. coli, there are seven sigma factors in the cell. They recognize different DNA sequences and thus recognize different promoters in the cell. Sigma 70 regulates most central dogma genes and the others are specific to other processes. For example, the sigma 28 dependent promoters all control genes associated with biosynthesizing flagella. Other prokaryotes have more sigma factors than E. coli or just a different set of orthologs. Thus the vocabulary of promoter types isn't the same in all bacteria. For example, the RPON-dependent promoters in Geobacter have a very different recognition sequence than E. coli's sigma-70 promoters. E. coli has an RPON homologue called sigma-54 that plays similar biological roles to RPON and Geobacter. Again, there are two boxes, but they are located closer to each other and emphasize different bases at a fewer number of sites. The most dominant pattern is a pair of two Gs at minus 24 and GC at minus 12. Families of simple promoters that respond to a specific type of sigma factor can be generated randomly in the lab. In this experiment we did with Berkeley iGEM in 2006, a family of constitutive sigma 70 promoter was generated combinatorially. We designed a library in which biobrick restriction sites were flanked by a polylinker of NHE1 and AVR2 sites, a few constant bases such as the TCAGT stretch in black, then mostly random sequence at the minus 35 and minus 10 positions. We chose this spacing to make the transcriptional start site be comparable to other popular promoter parts in the registry. Note that there is nothing promoterish about this sequence per se except for the positioning of the random bases. The DNAs were inserted into a plasmid upstream of an RBS RFP terminator cassette. Individual colonies were picked and their fluorescence was measured. Stronger promoters would have higher fluorescence due to the increased production of RFP. From those hits, a set of 19 promoters varying across two orders of magnitude of intensity were identified and are referred to as the J23100 series or Anderson Promoter Library. It is not challenging to find sigma-70 promoters in libraries like this, and libraries like this generate the same scope of diversity that is found amongst natural promoters. For example, the strongest of these promoters is as strong as the strongest endogenous sigma-70 dependent promoters. Thus, there is nothing more to a sigma-70 promoter than being specific sequences based at particular positions relative to a common start site. Further studies on these promoters have revealed that indeed they are fairly consistent in their relative expression across growth conditions and independent of downstream genes. 
This has led to the exploration of quantitative methods for predicting what promoters to use in an experiment, and we'll revisit this in another section.